As if it wasn't already hard, the pandemic pushed moms to the brink. By mid-2021, one in three considered leaving or changing careers due to burnout. And millions eventually did. This left us with fewer teachers, nurses, healthcare workers, and other critical roles that make our world work. It simply didn't make sense to go to work, so moms made the decision to stay at home. But that doesn't mean they aren't working. They simply aren't being paid for the work they're doing. So we wanted to know from Angela what she believed the implications were and what could be done to fix it. When we think about the the phrase or term she session, which is like not my favorite. It's not my favorite. I, you know, it's so like, hard to yeah, produce. No, 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 no. <laughs> I also like, don't know if I if yeah. is it she session or <laughs> no, it's a she, session. she session. But it, we don't say recession, so it doesn't work. Yeah, like yeah. right, right. Yeah, I'm rooting for the cause, but I I, I kind of need I need a remix on that on that word. Mm. Given what you do, what do you think we lose both culturally and financially when caregivers have to or in many cases are forced to uh, walk away or, or stay away from, from, from work. What's that risk here? Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, I, I would say professional work, right? Because caregiving, yeah. it's really important to me to name that caregiving is work just because mm-hmm. it is undervalued um, financially and like in our society. Um, people are leaving professional work to do domestic work. Right. And so I think that's just, that's, I mean, I, I think that you're on board with that idea, but I also want to be really like, I want to name that from the beginning. So I want to like to go back to like the beginning of the pandemic. Women's participation in the workforce, the professional workforce outside of the home is directly tied to our appearance in public life and to our yeah. like relationship to public life. And so I think like before we even go into caregivers, like the like the she session <laughs> that was brought on by the pandemic it first and foremost affected black and brown women the most. Like when we first saw employment rates skyrocketing, that was in service industries, right? So that's like restaurants, salons, and like child care centers. And many of those child care centers closed and never to reopen, right? So there was this large number of black and brown women who were forced out of the workforce, who found themselves unemployed. And so right then and there, it's we're removing the presence, like seeing when we go outside black and brown women, right? So that it starts there. And then it it grew, right? Women were, the employment numbers grew. And then in the fall of 2020, when schools remained closed, 865,000 women were forced out of the workforce in one month, right? And that was because they couldn't do professional work and domestic work and also be like online school monitors at the same time. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, we lose so much. Like we lose things like research contributions, right? For me, I was I had a hard time writing. So you were losing my like thoughts, my words, my our creative energy, right? But you were also just losing our presence, our vitality, <laughs> our resourcefulness, you know, our beauty, right? There's there's all of these things like that we and I think what's what's really difficult to me about that is that our American society is like very is already already has a hard time accepting the fullness and the richness of women of color and our experiences and, and all women. And so we're just we're losing all of the things that our culture needs yeah. desperately. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I think about uh you know, policy, right? Like we don't have a family leave policy, mm-hmm. um, a federal family leave policy. And we've never had like many other countries that are as quote unquote developed or as wealthy as us. Like we've never had a female in like federal leadership. And I, that's not a coincidence that we've never had like a robust family leave policy, right? Like our laws are made by white men. Um, yeah. And so what we need are actual policies that reflect the realities of caregivers and families in the United States. And um, yeah, I, I really worry how this, um, I mean, we're making gains back, but I think it was the beginning of 2020 that we're still like 2 million less women in the professional workforce than there were at the start of 2020. So, yeah. you know, it's going to take us a long time. Like we are, we were already at a deficit and I worry that we've lost that. I mean, I think our communities and our homes are sort of are benefiting from our expertise and our energy and all of the stuff that we want to that we're channeling into that. But um, and that's good, I think, at a community level. But we need change on multiple levels. 
We hope you enjoyed this episode of Cashing Out the Podcast. To see more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and be sure to turn on your notifications. To get your copy of Cashing Out the Book, visit Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, your local bookstore, or download the audiobook on Audible.